You guys are really great with asymptotes, especially vertical asymptotes. You know that when you have a rational function, when you set the denominator equal to zero, you get a vertical asymptote as long as it won't cancel out and leave a hole. So for instance, in this picture right here, this x minus 4 will not cancel out, and so you would have an asymptote at 4. Well, let's look at the graph and see what this does to limits. So in this graph, in the first graph here, we have two asymptotes, one at negative 3 and one at 2. And notice what the function does. Remember, an asymptote breaks the function, and it's always trying to get closer. So the function is either going to positive infinity or negative infinity near the asymptotes, near every asymptote. And this is the same on this next one. The vertical asymptote here is not shown, but it's obviously at x equals 0. And that is the vertical asymptote here. And both sides of the function are going to negative infinity. So they can both go to positive infinity or negative infinity, or uh, each side can go to either. So you do have to look at the left and the right. For a horizontal asymptote, that is when you take a limit and you go to infinity and you get a b. And this is a b is just a constant value like 2 thirds or 5. And that usually happens when the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same. We've done that before. Um, you need to really be really careful here because you can have two different horizontal asymptotes when you go to infinity and negative infinity. And this is a great example. For this example right here, as you go to a negative infinity, this limit would be negative 1. And the um, horizontal asymptote would be y equals negative 1. And another horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 1 because it goes to a positive, as, cause it goes, as it goes to positive infinity, it gets closer and closer to 1. So there's an example where you have both. And this usually happens on certain functions. If you have a square root function, an absolute value function, or um, an exponential function, you need to definitely make sure that you don't have more than one asymptote. And we'll do a lot of those in class together. Next, we're talking about the squeeze theorem. I just love the name of the squeeze theorem. It's so fun. Anyway, um, if you can't find a limit directly for some reason, then you can use what's known as the squeeze theorem if you know functions who are close to that uh, limit, so to that function. So right here we have g of x, h of x, and f of x. And as you can see with these less than signs, g of x is less than f of x, and h of x is larger. So we have an example here, and I actually went ahead and graphed these. So this first function here is less than f of x, so that would be like this function. So this function is going to be g of x here, and the function above it is going to be h of x, which is going to be right here, h of x. So the squeeze theorem says f of x is between these two functions. So we don't know what this function is. This middle function could be anything. It could come down like this, it could be crazy, but we do know that it goes in between h of x and g of x. It could even be as big as this, we don't know. But we do know that at this point, everywhere in this function, this function f of x, everywhere on this interval is between g of x and h of x, and that'll help us solve it. So what we can do is, since we know it's between that, all we have to do is find the limit of g of x and the limit of h of x, and then that should show us the limit of f of x. So let's find each of these as the limit goes to 0. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 minus x squared, and we're going to find then find the limit as x goes to 0 of 4 plus x squared, and that should give us the value of the limit of f of x. So on this side, uh, when we uh, plug in 0, we can do direct substitution. We get is 4, and here's the limit. And on this side, we also get 4. Therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 is also going to be 4.